Well, I had All right. Um, so when we're dimension arcs and holes, remember our line is supposed to go where? Right in the center. To the center, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends on either one is fine. <laughs> if we have an arc, so fillets, what, do you, what are what are we using? Radius. Radius. So all these are fillets. So are that, is that why they got bars? <laughs> Yeah. So R means radius. Anytime you have less than a full circle, you usually use a, a radius. So on this one, you know that the part probably does something like that. It probably does that. And those are coming in like that, right? So those are the dimensions outside of the part. Does that look familiar? Yeah, it's like John. See, this one... It's pointing towards the center. Can you move this too? No, I can see you. <laughs> so the line with the with the arrow on it is pointing towards the center also. When you do the dog radius in AutoCAD, it'll do that for you. So fill it around. So what's a fillet or a round? Fillet is an inside edge. Yeah, fillet's an inside. So look back here. <coughs> this would be a fillet. This would be a round. What are they usually used for? Why are they put on parts? Strength. So, yeah, add strength. Because so sharp so corners are bad. Sharp corners are weak spots. Easier to machine. Easier to make. It's really hard to make a, a tool with a real sharp edge on it and keep that sharp. Like if they have a radius on it, it's really easy to keep that sharp. Or like clearance and stuff like that too. Yeah, clearance is, uh, make, this makes it easier to make. Also on molds, it helps to get the, whatever you're molding, either plastic or metal, into the into the, the corners if it's got a radius instead of being sharp. So it just make, make it easier to make, pretty much. They also make it smooth so that you don't have rough corners everywhere. So you can dimension them just like regular arcs, like we did on the last slide. <clears throat> Usually when you're doing things with fillets and rounds, you've got them all over the place. Like if you have, look at the arms here, it's got fillets and rounds all over every every corner. Uh, most things are, are like that. They've got some kind of fillet and round. Oh, this one doesn't really have any edges, but. Most things have filter rounds, kind of, especially if it's a cast part, they don't have filter rounds everywhere. And so instead of having to say 48 of them, we can just make notes. So we can just say all fillets this, rounds this, if they're different. Um, we could say all casting radii or all filter rounds. They all mean basically the same thing um, <coughs> on what you, you decided to do. And it's always unless otherwise specified. So even though this doesn't say unless noted or unless otherwise, if you point at a dimension or at a fillet and give it a dimension, which one takes a precedence? The dimension. The dimension, right? So general notes are for things that aren't dimensioned directly. <coughs> and if it is dimensioned directly, use that dimension that's on. So if I had This part. Okay. And I said all fillets around is radius six. It means radius six, radius six, radius six, radius six. All of them. Unless it makes, makes one different. If I now add a dimension here, say radius eight, all of these are still six. That one is eight. Okay. This is a vacuum. It's just simplifying. Yeah. Makes our drawing a lot less. Well, we usually put that as a note, kind of down in the bottom left corner. We <coughs> just say notes, and put that in. <clears throat> so we've already talked about holes some. Um, we haven't talked about the different types of holes, really. <clears throat> so holes that don't go all the way through. What are they? What are they called? Yeah, holes. 
So this hole doesn't go all the way through. It's a bore. What's it called? No, it's not a bore. Yeah. Oh. Do you see a drawing that says bore on it? A <coughs> countersink. You know that's wrong. That's an old drawing. We don't write the words bore, or countersink, or any of that stuff. Depth depth symbols, but I don't remember what it's called. Well, since Freud, would you call it a depression? <laughs> so we have it. Yeah. This is our depth symbol that tells us how deep it is. But what is it called when it doesn't go all the way through? So. Blind. 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 So that's a blind hole. So you can't oh. see it from the other side. This one that goes all the way through, it is called a through hole. So we have through holes and we have blind holes. So right here, if we look at that note. Yeah, we have two. So one, two. At that diameter, that depth. What is that depth measuring to? Is it measuring to here or there? Measuring to the center, to the flat here. Yeah, it's measuring the, how deep the side of the hole is. So just like right here, it's measuring that. Oh, so you used a drill bit to do that one. Uh -huh. So we got this. What angle is that tip? You guys all did that lab one. It's, it's the right. angle of the drill bit. It's 120, use. right? It's actually 118. We draw 120 because they're not going to make a new drill tip that's 120 just for matter drawing. But it's easier to draw that way because we already have polar set at 30. So. 120? 120 between there and there. Do you see the drill bit now? Remember you had George and you had that line? So that angle is 120. So that means oh, that that's 30. 120 oh, degrees. Okay. That's 30. Okay. <coughs> so let's look at some of these. This one, this drawing is bad. Can you guys read any of that? Yeah, barely. Barely. Okay. So these are some other symbols we can use. So we have the counter bore symbol. What's a counter bore? Um, if you have a hole and then you just put a hole on top of it so that like a bolt or something would be flush with your material. Yeah, so if we have This is our counter board, and it's meant to make it, make it so that we can get the top of the ball flush. In, into there. Yeah. Either flush the surface or below the surface a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or spot face? Is that what that's called? So, I'm not done with this one. This is a counter board. Spot face is a little bit different. Oh. So the counter board point to the hole, because that's what we care about. <coughs> And we tell it the diameter of the hole, so 0.5, depth, 1, right, like that. So now that's telling us that that hole from here to here is 1. Now the second line, counter bore, <coughs> diameter 1, <coughs> depth. Point two five, from there to there. Make sense? Yeah. If I didn't have a depth here, what would I know? It's through. If there's no depth, it goes through. What if I left the depth off there? Uh, <laughs> would have nothing. It'd be wrong. <laughs> right? Yeah. Let's go through nothing. with the four. Oh, crap. <laughs> so. You want to make sure you keep that. Um, also, actually, what else might happen is if you take that off, what it might be is instead of being a counter bore, it'd be a spot face. So that's where a spot face is. So now, instead of being 
get up that deep. Something like that. So I don't give it a depth. There's not a different symbol for spot face? No, it's the same as the counter board. And you can see it on the drawing, but what is the spot face for? Knock the surface down. Yeah, just for making that surface flush. Making it nice and flat. Uh, like your if it's, gonna, if it's a casting, top the actual top of the surface would be, would be something like that, right? So the spot face, oh. all it really has to do is cut down enough to give you a flat. Yeah, it's called a countersink. No. Well, it is in, in woodworking. No. Countersink is angled. <laughs> spot face is flat. Spot faces and counter boards are flat. Counter sinks are angled. Oh, I mean it's <coughs> flat, flat, flat. Mm -hmm. The bottom is flat. So that'd be like the, the vertical walls. So that'd spot be like face. The, tip of the, the pot, top of the screw leveling the. No, yeah. that'd be a counter. No. No. This is a spot face. All it is is it's leveling out the surface, so we can so when our bolt of our screw goes, it can lay, it can lay flat. right here flat. Because if you can see this is actually at a slope, and if we try to do that, the head would be up here somewhere, right? So if we didn't countersink that, our screw would go in. What? Call it a countersink. Spot fix, whatever. Our screw would do that and not have full contact. By doing a spot face, if we make it flat, yeah, so now we can have full contact in there. Oh, okay. A counter sink, fun. we have the same oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. So if I change this, to a counter sink. <coughs> That's a counter sink. That's a counter sink. Yeah, Okay. <clears throat> and then I'll tell it <coughs> what angle it's at. That angle is the angle between there and there. Okay. So what do you use counter sinks for? Uh, uh, diagonal screws. Angle screws. Like sheet metal screws. Not, not sheet metal screws. Uh, drywall screws. Up with the, the beef. Not usually drywall screws. Well, they have well wood, well, they wood, have wood screws. Yeah, they, I know they, 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 they kind of sink themselves. That type of wood screw. screw. Well, I'm talking about if you're designing a part, why oh, would you put a countersink on? Desk parts. Like oh, screws well, for the. Why? I guess we'll have to get to this when we go back to fasteners, right? Uh, no, it's So, like different like types of fasteners have different shapes. Yeah. <clears throat> so, flat heads, oval heads, they have countersinks on the bottom. They'll, they'll actually nest down into this. So what's a ben why would what's the difference between using a counter bore and a counter sink? Just depending on the type of head. Why would you choose one head style over another? Because whether or not it's angled or flat. Well, but what does that do? If it's a flat, flat one, it has more surface area. It allows the whole it? surface to rest. No, because if you, here you've got this whole surface area here, so you might actually have more surface area for the counter sink. Well, you, but but some you want to take out. They won't be flat. You, yeah. you want your. It'll like, allow you all areas to make screw, contact with the part. Screw, like, but still, the, the area where it's crossing here, it's only that much. It's only this actual measurement difference between here. On a counter sink, it's still that, but it's also going down. So it's, it's right. more so contact you, area. But if you had a, a, a flat bottom screw, then it wouldn't have more contact. It would only touch it like the edges. Yeah, it could. I'm talking, yeah, like that. The, the bottom of that. You're talking about why we would have the difference. The, the differences, right? And between yeah, a counter so, sink and a counter board? Because. Mm -hmm. The ones that you would use for a counter board when it worked was in the counter sink. No, but if, if okay, why do we pick one over the other? Why, why do we pick a, a pan head over a flat head or a flat head over a pan head? Well, why would we pick one over the other? Flat head, you ain't got to worry about easy getting checked out either. It depends on what we're making, right? But what's what's the difference? Do they work exactly the same? Mm -hmm. Sure, they hold things together. No, not Think not necessarily. Usually, they do hold things together, but. How Use they a work counter they sink if you have piece. a pointed tip, <clears throat> and if you have a flat tip, most of the time they have a uh, flat. Yes, I guess the bottom of the head would use a pan head or something else for a counter sink or a hex bolt. We use a flat head 
or pet or uh, uh, oval head okay. with a taper at the bottom for. Well, we're trying to figure out why we. But why would you choose one over the other? That's production methods cross plan. Well, it depends on if you're using. Uh, it depends on the, the, the material. I sit in the test tank class. Why are you asking questions? But on that. So here's. A flat head. What? Why that one? That's typically used in metal. They're both used in metal. They're both used in wood. Oh yeah, but with a flat head, you can't use it. So, but what does what does this do that that doesn't do? It allows you to counter sink it. It flush with the. They can both be flush if you counter for that. Because one has space have inside pencil, inside the bore and one's tight I don't know. fit. We could argue about this for the next 20 minutes. One's a tight fit, us. one's loose fit. What, what do you mean a tight fit, loose fit? If you fit? bore it, you're still going to have space in that inside that bore. You're still going to have space even if you put the screw No, in that's there. why you do a spot face so that yeah, it will make just, contact This is a through hole. It's clearance for it. But you, still have, you still have space no matter how far in the screw goes in. Uh, you, you're on the right track. This one, even though it's tight, this bottom piece can, this piece can move back and forth, right? Yeah. On this one, oh, it centers itself. It centers itself, right? When you when you tighten it down, it's going to center itself within the hole. Yeah. That's the difference. Woohoo! Two That's an important difference to remember for next week when we start talking about tolerancing. Why next wouldn't that center itself? Because it's because it, it's just a hole, and so they can be off center from inside each other. Oh, so oh, that's have, not a threaded hole. So you have no, that. It's just a, a, yeah, we're just talking about it's just a shaft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you got that, right? Yeah, they can be off there. Because the machine is good enough to kind of board. No matter what size you drew, you made this inside the hole. If you you can make this really oversized, but because of the head and the countersink, It'll it would center, center itself. That's the difference. That's an important difference. So, so, so that one there would have. That yeah, would have a, some sort of securing system on well, the bottom. Like it just it would allow you to have some slop. So Ford loves slop, right? At least they, they used to. They're trying to get better, but they're still, if you look it up, they've got slots, not nice round perfect holes. <clears throat> slop means you don't have as much wasted parts. It also means these don't fit as well. Yeah. I mean that was that was classic American cars. Yeah. You make it holes big enough that no matter if it's made right or wrong, it's gonna go together. That allows you to loosen your tolerances. And, also and so, common people to work on their cars. What? It also allows common people to work on their cars. Because common people don't, you know, tolerances and stuff like well, that. Well, the, the tighter tight tolerances don't make it harder to work on it after it's already made. Because it, now it, you just put it on and it goes together perfect. <laughs> it, <breaks> it, <clears throat> it doesn't. You don't have to do any alignment. You put your, your holes in, and it lines itself up. <clears throat> that that could be a whole debate. Just get a Japanese. So, but I'm not, I'm talking about the tolerance and the fit and stuff. So, yeah. so we've already talked about reference. What does reference mean? It means it's something just for the machine or something. And just for them to look at so they don't have to do the math, but not, it's not to be inspected. We can do arc length, slope, we can do square. We've already talked about times. And then we've already talked about radius. What's SR? And S diameter. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. What's I don't know. Is that I would bring it up in another class. That's because they're doing machines. Spherical. Yeah, it's spherical. Radius. So, radius and diameter are 2D circles, right? It's mm -hmm. a cylinder. So, a hole is a cylinder, right? Yeah. Cylinder. <clears throat> Circle from this side, rectangle from this side. That's radius and diameter. Spherical radius and spherical diameter are a ball. It means that from all sides it's a circle. Just a ball. Mm -hmm. or it it doesn't have to be a full circle. But it's half of it, right? It could be it could be anything between a full sphere just and just a little tiny piece of a sphere. If I had Yeah, like this. That's from the that's side view, if I had a little piece like this. It was just that much of it. That would be a spherical radius if I dimension. So like that part? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the top of, of the three to mouse. That is nowhere near a full sphere, but it's spherical. So that'd be a spherical radius. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the entire 
hired flash. Oh, I forgot I did have a hole. Oh. I knew I had done this, I forgot where I put it. Um, oh, this will be on the H drive for you to see. All of them? Mm -hmm. I'll put this on the H drive for you. All of them. What? Oh, yeah, it'll be there too, but I'll, I'll put this just as I mentioned there too. Right. <clears throat> so you can see the differences. We also have tapped holes. Tap? Like so tap? No. We'll talk about, so that's threads. So we'll talk more about that when we go back to fasteners. But whenever you have two, a solid line and an outside line, it's probably going to be a tap. So, so threaded. Do they do the outside line automatically? Type in tap, you know, to go to the hole command. In tap. AutoCAD? No. In Inventor, yes. So okay. the first one would be more like a wedge hole? This would be <laughs> just a drill hole. Now, now a wedge hole? A drill and What's a wedge hole? Like, you know, where the, the little wood piece is when you're connecting two, two wood cabinets? Are you talking about dowels? Dowels, yeah. Like That's, dowel holes? It could be. It could be used for whatever you want. It's but not, I mean, they don't have threads, though, so it's just a straight drill hole. Or it could be something that needs to go into it. it doesn't, use could be anything. It's just a straight drill hole. It could even just be like a starter hole for another screw to come in later. Yeah. yeah. Or a clearance or yeah. something for a pin to go in. Or There's all kinds of reasons for that. But it's just a regular hole. <clears throat> so it's not tapered. If it's tapered, then it would actually have dimensions on it. Or it'd have it in the note that it's tapered. <clears throat> so holes we look at, it, we can mention where they're round. Cylinders, though. We dimension them where they're rectangular. Why do we dimension cylinders where they're rectangular? So we can see the outside edge. Yeah, we can see the thing. What are we saying here? Because we don't really even need that other piece. Yeah, because we don't need this. If I dimension it here, we can get rid of a view. Cool. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. that's the only dimension you're going to be able to pull off that circle is. Yeah. And it's nice diameter. to see that. We still want to put a diameter symbol on it to let us know that it's round. So, no matter what, how complex it is, we usually want to do diameters where we can see them as a, a rectangle, not round. It's kind of up, depending on the part, it could be which one, but usually we want to do it on, on this view. What do you mean? Just that. <clears throat> This diameter dimension, it's better to go out with this view, the rectangular view. Because. Because you wouldn't, you would think it was. Because that's what the uh, Bible says. So if you were to dimension <laughs> the circle, if, if that was our, our actual drawing, it, we could just draw the, the rectangle and put the diameter over there. We don't even need the circle. Yeah, we, we don't need the view at all. That that's a cylinder. So, or someone that would know would, would be able to tell that that's a cylinder. Oh, when you're looking down the side view? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was about. Same thing. Huh? Rectangular view. Rectangular view. Yeah, well, that's those okay. other that, circles. If I told you this square, is a diameter, you would know it's round, right? That sounds stupid. I saw a different angle. <laughs> okay, so just put the diameter symbol. That's it. All right. So when we're placing our dimensions, we want to put them where we can actually see the features. So look at those two. Which one is the best one? The right one? Does anyone say left? Um, Look for, remember, remember the thing I've told you so far. Still looking, hold on. You just saw this mess. Circles with something right there. I would say the right one is I would say the right one. Giving you numbers that you're not getting in the Oh, that's all the same numbers. I would Different. say the right one. The right one. But the this right one is kind of extreme of breaking every single rule, right? Yeah. They put everything in the wrong place. So let's look at, at the wrong one first. <coughs> they love your pet peeves. So, what's the biggest thing that's doing wrong here? Yeah. It's got a dimension to a hidden line. Dimension to a hidden line. So that would be better to go here. Right? Yeah. Got that other radius on the top. That one. It'd be better here, cause, right? Why is it better to put that radius here? Because you actually can see the circle. Yeah, because you can actually see the shape of it, right? So this one again is dimensioning hem lines, so we can put it here. 
That would be a lot better. Are there any other ones that are bad? Horrendously? Uh, not horrendous. No. Now let's just go for ones that should be in better places. Well, that one on the bottom is very, the, like that, that slot isn't very helpful. Those yeah, points it's not. Very helpful. What, what is, what's the shape of the slot? Is that a, does that have a round at the back? Is it square? Is it, what's going on there? And they, and is it angled? You really can't tell anything about that slot from this, right? And those are basically the same dimensions. If we add it here, you can see everything about that slot just by looking at it, right? Same thing, this dimension. This here, all I see is lines. Same thing here, all I see is a line. I don't know, that's not giving me anything. I see that on both spots. Up on top or the bottom. If we do it this way, now I look at this view, I can see everything I need to know about that slot. I can see that it's got a depth of 10, the spacing on it, that that is straight across, it's not at an angle. It's not curved. I come over here. Now instead of dimensioning a line, I can see that, oh, that's a step. But you also can't tell if that's a square or if that's Where? a rectangular that's over, right? This? That's a hidden line. That's just kind of secondary. I, I look at visible lines first. But what I'm saying, even on visible, that doesn't tell me if that's just a square cutout or if that's a, a square. circular, right? This? This cutout? Yeah, it does. Oh, oh it's got corners. <laughs> Shows you right there. I mean, it could be a circle this way, right? Yeah, in those You're saying? Yeah. But because we have that here, I can see a lot more detail than that. I can still see this and see, okay, that's a straight line. Okay. But here, I get more information than I do there. Here, all it tells me is that it's a straight up and down. It gives you yeah. a one phase. Okay. Here, I see that. I see that. I see the angle there. Because okay. this, this, in order for this to be down. this way, this could be that. It could be that, right? Or it could be that. Yeah. Or any other combinations well, of angles and arcs. It couldn't be that, ye that yellow one with the line that we have down. Sure, good. Not with the line that we have on the side view. Okay. There. <laughs> now this line lines up that. <laughs> now it can be. Yeah. I think he just made it all. And he just has the center line right there in the back. So. It's so I mean, yeah, it can't be this because of that, but if this line was moved over some, or if I move that up a little bit, I, I could do it. So there's a lot of things I could do. Okay, so let's be a little bit more precise. It could be that. It could be that. It could be that, right? Is that better? Okay. So it could be any of those. Is that better, and so this view shows me that. This view is the same no matter what. Yeah. So this is a better view for it. Same thing with this. If I look at this view, I have no idea what this, this is doing. It could be angled, it could be curved. Here I can see, okay, that's an L shape. So you want to put the dimensions where you can see the shape better. <clears throat> so also remember that we're not just looking at circles, we're looking at features. So when you see a circle, it's really a hole, or it's really a cylinder. <clears throat> if you see a square, it's really a prism. Something. So everything needs to have a size and a location. Don't forget both. So the outside, there's no location on it because it's the outside of it. But everything in, on the inside of it needs to have a location somehow. So either from the center line out or from the outside in, somehow it needs to be dimensioned so we know where it is. Also sizes. I think I went through about two months where I forgot to put diameters on all my holes. And then I got that, I forgot to put X dimensions on everything. I put Y dimensions, but I forgot X dimensions. So you need to know X and Y location and what size it is on everything. Okay? So here's some some other types. So we're gonna talk about baseline dimensions. Oh, sorry. We can do it for angles as well as linear dimensions. We can do continuous dimensions. What's the difference between doing it baseline and doing it continuous? 
baseline is like just if you do continuous, that means those are all relative to each other, and they need to be that from each other, right? Yep. Baseline is just saving space. <laughs> Taking that space. Yeah, but, so but if one you block instead of having multiple lines going through. But oh, baseline cool. gave you all the dimensions, both yeah. directions, if up get, and out, and then you just yeah. choose which ones you want to keep. Because the baseline one means that, the, that those holes need to be that distance away from that edge. The continuous ones mean those holes need to be that those distance away from each other. So continuously from each one. Yeah, yeah. from each, each each hole. That means the holes are more important than than the actual yeah. frame. As long that as the yeah. whatever that's your space be is more important. <laughs> yeah, so here it's the distance between the holes is what's important. Right? And yeah, here it's the dimension from that right. outside that's important. So here we've kind of got it mixed on the outside, but then also between the holes. So if you're looking at this one, what what can you think of the, of the neither part that's going to go with that? Gears? No, like, like, uh... Gears. Like screws? <laughs> Or I guess you could be right. What's the next, what's the part that goes to this gonna have? It's gonna, it's gonna have, have like, holes. It's gonna have like screws or something. It's gonna have they're gonna be connected by screws or something, right? Screws and gears. <laughs> what's the spacing on those gears. holes gonna be? The distance apart that. that, right? Yeah. That's why they're giving us that distance because on the other part So that's the piece that's going there? It has two holes that have that dimension between them. <clears throat> so next week when we get to tolerances, we're going to spend a, a bit of time on the difference between those two. <clears throat> and why you pick one over the other. So it, it, it takes into account how their tolerances add up with, with each other. When you're doing the chain, will that automatically, you just have to keep clicking on each circle and it will automatically expand it? Yep. You can also do bolt circles. So right here, the circular center line. We also have ordinate dimensions. <clears throat> so now we can set an origin and use X and Y. That's like from motherboard type stuff. Anytime you have a bunch of holes or dimensions. So I use ordinate a lot in sheet metal. So if this part bends there, so it has kind of a, it's got a top piece. It's got a thing, it's got something coming up inside, and it's got something like that, right? And so these are the bend lines. So instead of doing baseline, and having a dimension here, 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 all the way up, we do ordinate, and that's saying zero. Like that. So I just have all my numbers across. Instead of going all the way down to here. And so and that's where I use ordinate the most. <coughs> No, when you do the ordinate, is it gonna is it gonna can you go back to the other one? No, I'm back. Is it one the picture? Don't think that way. So when you do it like that, it's just gonna continuously make lines all across the board? Uh, Whatever you click, it'll put a, a line down. That, that's what I'm saying, when you press ordinate, it's gonna actually make those lines or do you have to start making dimensions? Yeah. So I guess I'll come back. I, I think this he one. means is it gonna go to the part? Yeah. So up here. So if I tell it, if I move my origin to there, and now I do ordinate, I'm down there, I wouldn't want to do it there, but I can 
see how I'm kind of doing it. Okay. That's just going in. If you do one at a time, but it goes from wherever the origin is. That's where it measures from. Do you have to put your origin there? Could you just pick that spot? No, you have to put it. Or actually, oh, you can pick. No, oh, yeah, you can put it. If you do it here, you can say. You can say uh, that's going to be my x datum. Oh, okay. So you just oh. maybe. Okay, so no, you have to put the origin there. Got it. <laughs> Should go to options there. It's lying to you. Yeah. I don't know. For me, I always just put the origin there. You need an update. If you can do it another way, that's fine. But that's the way I always do it. Remember, there's always at least two or three ways to do something. Do what works for you. As far as using AutoCAD. So the rules. We have dimensions one through or rules one through six. Four, five, and six you can break. In decrease order. So if you have to, you can go inside the envelope. Then if you still can't get everything, go inside the park. Still can't get anything, go inside or let dimension lines cross. One through three. One through three, never break. Four, five, six, it's okay. One, two, three, never break those three rules. You cannot break one, two, and three. Four, five, and six, if you have to, break them from six, five, and four. If you want to see a big list, all those drafting books have like three pages of rules. Okay. And then of course the standard is like that thick. But they all, it all boils down to this. If you go by this, we talked about today, that, that's it. Any questions? So what you're going to be able to do this week, I'll come back on Thursday and I'll mention this with you. But Go back and start dimensioning your drawings. <clears throat> so, you've done a lot of drawings now. Pick at least one drawing per week and dimension it. If you want to do all of them, that's better. More practice makes you better. <clears throat> if you want to practice doing the rounding, I set up a quiz here. It's not graded, <laughs> or it's graded, but I'm not. It's not going to go into a category in the grade book. It's not going to count for or against you. But you need to practice rounding. You can do that one. And it'll actually let you do one question at a time. So, what's that to two places? To two places? One, zero, three. Wow. So you can hit check. You can get it right. It tells you you got it correct. You get it. And now you can hit next and go to the next one. Okay? Actually, I'm going to change it so it's all on one page. But. So if you, need to, if you want to practice rounding, go for this. Do you have to hit check every time? Only if you want to tell you what you got right as you're going. So any questions? All right, have fun. Are you putting this stuff out?